Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. Everything in life starts with communication. We communicate. If we didn't, how would anybody know what we're talking about? How would we convey ideas? All of that. Part of that communication in the workplace is for companies. What messaging are you putting out there? Got somebody that we're going to look at a company that she worked with recently that won a huge contract and she worked with them on that. The company that she works with is Effective Presentations and she is Jesse Dettino and she's with us today. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you doing, Steve? Fantastic. Good to have you with us. And uh, I'm intrigued to get to uh, sort of our case study with uh, the company that you work with. Now, even before we get there, Effective Presentations, the company you work with, what are some of the things that they do? We specialize in getting people comfortable speaking no matter where they are, no matter who they're speaking to. It is one of uh, my, my, my crowning achievements, I do believe, in terms of onboarding with the skills behind presentations and then also matching that, pairing that with ideas about leadership. How can we use our communication the most effectively to deepen not only our professional lives, but our personal lives as well? And then behind all of that is the messaging piece of it. What are we, what are we actually saying? And are we using our time and our other's time, whether it's the presentation or the conversation, intentionally? And that's the big cornerstone of what effective presentations brings to companies and individuals. And I'm really proud to be a part of it. So that leads us into a company that you worked with recently who found a lot of success in just homing in on what their messaging is or was. Um, tell us about that. About, I want to say a couple of months ago, I went out to Florida and worked with an engineering firm called WGI. Very, very, very smart group of people that know their content very, very well. One of the things that they do is create and develop designs that the government could potentially buy and respond to requests for proposals. Now, these are very big deals because it's a lot of money, a lot of reputation is at stake, and it's very complicated. There are certain messaging items that the team that is picking what RFP they will go with are looking for. Now, sometimes that messaging can be in a slide deck, and sometimes that messaging are the actual words that they say. And what we were looking at was a group of individuals who knew exactly what they were saying. They knew exactly their content, but they weren't quite considering their audience yet. Now, that audience could vary from someone who has a very deep understanding of engineering design and a very deep understanding of the transportation system that audience could also be someone who is looking at time management skills, looking at a budget, and might not know those deeper things, those, those innate things that those engineers knew so, so viscerally. We took a hour pitch. We completely reworked a slide deck that was very complicated to read easily understood by someone who understood engineering, but not so much by the layman who might not get it. We reworked all of that information and started taking a little bit more time with the message and became more intentional with the actual words they were saying. They walked away after six years of not getting a win from the Department of Transportation in Florida, and now they're looking at a $15 million design contract. And I am wow. very proud that I was a part of that. Actually, I'm going down there in a couple of weeks to work on another pitch with them. Wow. Good for you. I'm like, I'm like it's exciting. Good for uh, them. I'm going to be honest. I laser here and I'm very transparent. I have a marketing company as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. somebody recommended me to somebody else for an RFP. Ooh. And I, I don't know if it's going to come in May. He actually said, yeah, they're, 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 I recommend you. I'm not even sure if what to put in it. It's like, it's very detailed. Like you said, the messaging, um, when you talk about for this company, the content versus the messaging, how did that look? What were they doing? Eh, it, it, I don't, it, we can keep it confidential too. It doesn't matter. You know, I think they were doing what, what everyone innately 
the, the first go-to that everyone innately does, which is, I'm going to research, 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 content, 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 and then they do what I lovingly call the show up and throw up. They get up in front of a group of people, and they show how much they know, rather than thinking about their audience and what their audience actually needs to hear. One of the things that we talk about in our workshop all the time, all the time, mm. what is the one thing in the world that everyone is selfish about, Steve? What do you think? Say it again. The one thing in the world that... Every, I think every, every single person is selfish about. Ooh. Um, hmm. Their time. <laughs> You're exactly right. Seriously? Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. And a bunch of complicated language, a bunch of complicated ideas that one person in the room understands is a waste of everyone else's time. So how can we take a peek at these slide decks and look at an overcomplicated message and narrow it down to the few things that those people will be able to take away, away with them? Because the truth is, is that if you think about what earned time is and match it with trust, I mean, I think innately... Everyone is going to have a, a general idea. So the next time you're getting ready to do your RFP for your marketing company, there's going to be a number of companies that you're going up against that I, you probably have similarly equal quality work that you're sure. doing. Sure. Sure. Of course. But what's the one thing that's going to set you apart from the rest? You. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we're innately judgy creatures. I think that what we're constantly doing is wondering if we can trust the person that's in front of us. And trust goes back to that very, very, very beginning piece of what we just talked about. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Get out. You stand in front of me and make my time valuable for you. I'm innately going to trust you more and buy in to your pitch more. Because it's easier. You've thought about me. You've considered me. And I think that's the biggest piece that sets people a little above the rest. And that's why you get those RFPs. That's why you get those contracts. That's why we buy into the person, not the idea. So often. You can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you can't package it, deliver it, and sell it, it's dead in the water. It's so true. It's um, what's in it for me, meaning the, the for other person. I won't post anything on social unless I feel that it provides a benefit for somebody else, whatever it's going to be, positive vibe, whatever. Um, and even just to, to illustrate your point here, working in radio for, for since I was a kid, literally. Yeah. And everything on a morning show that we would talk about, I would put mm -hmm. it through the, who gives a blank filter before we do it. It's like, how does it, how does it going to benefit somebody else? What are they going to take from it? Whether it's funny, whether it's interesting, whether it's some insight, uh, it's got to have that that kind of that stickiness. Otherwise, yeah. what's the point? What, what you, you're wasting somebody's time. You're wasting somebody's time, and that's what I love. It's, it's almost. A, I, I found social media to be really difficult and incredibly inauthentic for a very long time until I found a lens of of looking at it through a mission statement. It's not about me. It's about you. So what can I do on my end to make sure, ensure that your time spent with me, whether it's a silly little post or an hour pitch or just a conversation with a friend, is about the other person. And that's when people start zoning out. It's when someone's making it all about themselves. I'm so glad you had 15 lobster rolls over the weekend. I don't know what that, what is, what's in it for me. Tell me which one is the best. I don't know. Right. Unless, you know, unless there's something positive, let's say you do a post and, and it's, I found the perfect lobster roll. If anybody wants to know, is it Jimmy's, you know, seafood shack? Hope you have a great weekend. I don't know. There's something, at least you gave a little something to somebody. And I think that the difference between that passive version or the version of, the, of what you just talked about was that there was intent behind it. Right. It was done intentionally. And it's not just the passive letting time fly, letting life fly by, just getting the information that we want out there. I'm a member of a, a, a few Facebook groups. You know, they're, they're like social groups. They all hang out. You know, there's a few, this one, that one. That, and the pictures are always the same. It's like, I don't know, the great Saturday night. And then, you know, somebody's, <laughs> it's all the same. And I'm like, after a while, I'm like, why am I looking at this? Because it's in my feed. And then, I'm like, you know why I'm looking at it? You know why I'm looking at those? Hoping that I'll get something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> the next one, on to the, there's never, all it is, is we're all hanging out together, having a great time, where 
<laughs> they're probably miserable anyway, but they just, you know, went out or whatever. Um, it's got to, there's got to be a reason that you're doing things to your point. Exactly. And that's the intent behind it. And, it, and to go back to what you were talking about initially with bringing your marketing company into an RFP, it can be so hard when you have so many points that you want to hit, right? Like they're asking you, you have to cover a certain amount of content. But we think, okay, I have to cover content, but we don't think about the why. It's just like blanketly putting a post out there because I feel it's Saturday and I, and I post every Saturday and I have to do it. What's the why behind it? And I think that that's the biggest piece of it. And that's what people appreciate. That's why there's certain people out there that have a million followers and, and because, because there's a reason behind it. Mm-hmm. Or that makes, even to your point too, even if it just makes me feel how, how many times if yeah. I, I try not to get su- sucked down the, you know, the, the, the video or real rabbit hole, but how many times right. you've been looking and you'll see a reel and you watch, it's like maybe 50 seconds and, and you're watching it. It's like, all right, this is going to be, there's going to be a payoff. And it gets to the end. There's I'm, I'm nothing. Right. Yeah. There's nothing. I wasted like, or if it's longer, like two minutes and, and yeah. you think it's going to go, there's something there. And then you look at the comments, and what do they say? You wasted my What's time. What's the name of the movie? Where is this? Why didn't you tell me? Yes. Right. Yeah. It's like you never want to be that person, you know? Mm-mm. So Mm-mm. No, it feels like a waste of time. It's like all those workout videos now, or the the I, the n- nutrition or or supplement videos where you you watch a very fit person for a long time, and they tell you all the things that you're doing wrong, but they don't tell you what to do right. <laughs> unless you click the link down below and I'll, and I'll give you my, my free blah, 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 blah. This is going to normally, normally I don't give that up. But you know what? I'm, I'm feeling like I need to free. So click that link down there below and I'll see you. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. There you it's, like, it's infuriating. It's a culture that we, we have right now where it's, it's like, you know, it's leading people on, leading people on. No, don't waste people's time like that. Mm. That's like even with thinking about presentations too, one of the exercises that I do in my workshop, because I think it's important to formulate your eye, is we watch presentations, speeches back, oftentimes TED Talks. And people have varying degrees of what they feel about TED Talks, and it, it, it's all fine. But what we're looking for is the lens, the, through the lens of public speaking and presentation. So what works for you? I mean, it's a very subjective topic. Everyone has different styles. Everyone is drawn to different attributes about that speaker, whatever it is. It could be physically, it could be tonally, it could be just in the how they made them feel. But within those moments, there's ultimately one presentation that I like to drop in and I always give this person this bit. They say, that was really fun to watch. I really enjoyed it, but I don't know why they were, why were they talking? And the answer is embedded in there, but they didn't tell us. And so instead of waiting until the very end to to explain why their time is valuable, my goal, one of my major goals, is to think about that first and foremost, because that's what builds trust. If you consider me as an audience member, and in those first 30 seconds you tell me why you are not wasting my time, and your message is intentional, I will buy into you forever. Mm. But if you draw it out and draw it out and draw it out and draw it out and draw it out for I don't know, views, needs, whatever it is. They're just wanting to hear that person hear themselves talk. You lost me. It's so true. And you're bringing back memories of like the fitness professional or for me, you yeah. know, it's, it's, you know, marketing schemes, whatever you normally right. watch, you get more of, you know, you, they, they feed you more. Right. Yeah. So how many times have you seen what we just talked about? Click the link down below and mm-hmm. I've actually done it. Like, I've t- let me see what they've, they've got. What do, what do they offer? And you go to a website, and it's the same thing. Scroll, scroll of garbage, blah, 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 blah. Like, mm-hmm. you are wasting my time. You're a jerk. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm, I, I, like, borderline, and I'm the chillest, low-key person on the planet. But I'm, like, a little bit, like, I'm annoyed now. Like, really? Here's yeah. another one, you know? So, really, to your point, if you can be genuinely authentic, mm-hmm. I know you're busy. I want to help you out. I've got something for you and then, and then deliver it in a short span of time. And then if you say, if you want to learn more, you know, click the link, whatever, at least you're being genuine. Here it is here. Here. I'm not, I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to keep you on my site longer. I'm not trying to whatever. I mean, 
just from a marketing point of view, whether you're marketing yourself, whether you're marketing an idea, whether you're marketing a product, the biggest way that people lose me, and oh my gosh, how many times have you scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and then maybe just subscribed because you've already spent that much time, but it's done a little bit resentfully? <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you spent, you've invested so much time already. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. It's like staying in a bad relationship. Wow. Well, well, that, well, how many times it's like, you know, the, let's say, you know, you're, you're going to go on a date with somebody and you're like, I know it's not going to be that great, but I'm just going to go no. anyway because we've been chatting on an app for, for, yeah, and you, exactly. Because like, right. And you know, you already knew it's the same thing when you subscribe. Sometimes you use, yeah. the, you know, the junkie Gmail uh, address just to, you know, put it in there so it's not in your face all the time. But um, it's so true. Like yeah. when you work with people, now this was one situation with the RFP for this company. Mm-hmm. You help with presentations as well, like verbal presentations, like we're doing right now, Zoom presentations with people, all yeah. of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we run the gamut. It all boils down to the skill. And half of that is just being interested rather than trying to be interesting. And I think a lot of that is, Yes, we look at slide decks, of course we do. We look at in-person presentations, we look at Zoom presentations, but if you really boil it all down, everything that we work on here, it's just good communication skills. And this goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning, with onboarding these communication skills, it transfers everywhere. Mm. It's, ta- it's the same interaction that you have paying for your gas at your gas station versus having a really hard conversation with your sister because it's time for something, whatever it is, it's they're all the same skills. And it's just about not making it about ourselves and making it about the other person. And other people really feel and trust that. So when we think about our messaging, yeah, it is it is making eye contact and it's and it's making sure that we are in control of, of the tone of our voice. Making sure that we're received in the way that we intend and opening ourselves up. To, to let that person have the same opportunity, but it's also about be, being very intentional with your messaging. And that's the big piece of it, is how, how can I become more and more intentional with my messaging so it's not just a passive waste of another, another person. I'm going to remember what you said, being interested as opposed to being interesting. Yeah, it's that's big, a big, big deal. Of, for that. That's a big deal, right? I think so. I think so. I started off my career, and I did a little Google to key to Steve and the other folks that you work with, and I know that you all have a history in the arts. I spent a lot of time in the arts myself, and, and part of that was being interested in the other, whoever your scene partner was, whoever that character was being written, rather than making ourselves be the interesting one, because that's not fun to watch. It's not fun to watch if you have a third wall there. It's also not fun to be in a conversation with. And that's what presentations are. They're just conversations. Were you, when you were younger, were you, mm-hmm. were you like shy? Did you have, mm. yeah? Incredibly shy. And you know what's interesting? Actually, I was at a workshop a couple of weeks ago, and this woman, this woman reframed being an introverted extrovert in a way that I just fell in love with. And the way that she just, it was when when an extrovert wakes up in the morning, and neither of them are right or wrong, good or bad. It's just truth. I, I and it, this analogy spoke. when an extrovert woke up and wakes up in the morning, they have a cup. They have a cup that they're going to fill with coins, and that cup at the beginning of the day is empty. So they fill it from other people. They fill their cup with coins from the interactions that they receive from other people. They fill, So at the end of the day, that cup is loaded and they're ready to go. An introvert wakes up in the morning with a very full cup of coins. And as they walk through the day and have these interactions, they're giving themselves away, giving themselves away so that when that cup is depleted, they have to take time and shut down. Now, I don't know that I was entirely shy, but I do think that interactions, though I love them, I love them, it takes a piece of me. And so I need to be very, very, very conscious of when there's no, when I, when I need to take turns to read, take my time to refill my cup. Totally understand it. <laughs> I totally, yeah. Were you totally, the same way? I to- totally, yes. And, and it was even to the point where, you know, working in radio, even doing podcasts at the end of the day, sometimes I don't want to talk. I'm like, oh. you know, just like, like you say, and it's not, it's also, if you believe in energy, 
you're giving a piece of energy here and here right. and here. And you, you, you're caught. You only have so much to give. Yeah. So maybe at the end of the day. So but it's an interesting analogy, you know, between an extrovert and an introvert in the, uh, the cup uh, visual. Like, <laughs> the fill, the fill of, some of the cup. I, 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 it spoke to me when, when, when someone first explained it that way because it felt, it didn't feel, sometimes introvert, when people talk about introverts, it can have a little bit of a negative connotation. Yes. Oh, that's true. I just think that, I think that we all, in order, in order to know what you can give, you have to know what you can handle. And it's different for everybody. And there's no, there's no right or wrong version of that at all. But, you know, when you're getting ready to do, a, let's say, your next RFP pitch there, Steve, for your marketing <laughs> company, you might know that you've got, I mean, to take some time before it. We, we all need to know what it takes to be the most effective version of a communicator that we can. And that is going to look different for everybody. Sometimes it's hard for people to just simply write an email. Other times it's, it's the most stressful thing in the whole wide world to stand up in front of a group of people and talk. Or... Maybe they love those presentations, but in that meeting, when someone, when all eyes are looking at them with their colleagues, that's the most nerve-wracking thing. Who knows what it is? But it's a journey to know ourselves, and that's a big piece of it, is how do we communicate and what works for us. And I think the cornerstone of all of it, all of it, is that feeling of time being wasted. And I know that, I know that if I, my cup isn't full, then I, 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 I don't, I'd, I'd be wasting other people's time. Wow. Well, I learned a lot today from you. Seriously. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you for like, having me on. Like, super cool. Um, and, and one overlying theme here is that when you work on this stuff for your business, it trickles down mm -hmm. in your life. You just yeah. develop those skills, the keen sense of, I'm not going to waste your time. It's even mm -hmm. in, in, in a conversation, you know, you, you run into somebody, you tell them a story. Uh, yeah. Side note, I'm in a men's group. Joined about six months ago. And impactful, really good, whatever. Um, yeah. There's one man in the group that when he, and he's, got, he's got a great voice, like just a great guy. When he speaks mm -hmm. and tells a story, we all look at him, laser, laser it down, laser, because he's like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the values of the group is respect other men's time. So just exactly what you're saying. I love that. Exactly yeah. what you're saying. That's like one of the core top five values. It, it, respect others' time. Um, mm -hmm. how do we find you? Can we connect with you? Or of course, you know, effectivepresentations.com, I believe is the website for the company. Yes. Effectivepresentations.com is the website to the company. Uh, my name is Jesse Bettino. My parents were really generous and gave me a very unique spelling of it. It's J E S S I E E at effectivepresentations.com. If anyone's curious, please reach out. And I'd be happy to talk about our offerings and what, a little bit more about what we do here at the company. This is one of the most important things in life, communication. This is how we mm -hmm. connect with people. It's all there, whether it's personally, professionally. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for not thank wasting you. our time, by the way. This is all great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. For having me. I really enjoyed it, Steve. And, and also thank you for saying that too, because I truly believe that intentional communication is one of the most valuable things that we have. And also we, we also need to be, we need help with it. We do. We need to be able to have room and space to explore it. And I know I'm, I'm constantly curious and growing. And if you are curious and want to grow, please reach out. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips that you plan in advance, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends for which you make a group chat three months before so that nobody or anything is missing? Or your daughter's first birthday party? You planned it with such dedication that instead of the first, it felt like our quinces. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. 
protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.